Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host here on the site to teach you how to play mandolin and guitar, but this is Banjo Week. We're going to have fun this week. Uh, everybody knows this old song, On Top of Old Smokey. It's an old favorite, but we're going to do lots of things with it. First of all, we are going to do a build a break, so we're going to start with that very basic melody, then learn how to put rolls with the basic melody, then learn how to start putting ornaments and licks in there, so that's always fun. But also we're going to look at what it means to play banjo in waltz timing or in 3-4 timing. So there's three beats in this measure instead of four and that can start to mess you up a little bit. Your rolls don't quite work the same, your licks don't quite work the same, but I'm here to help. If you're watching somewhere else beside the website, I'd be honored to have you on board over there at BanjoBenClark.com. Join us a Gold Pick member, get access to hundreds of lessons, literally. So you need to come over there and check it out. Let's jump right in. Let's first talk just a bit about what it means to play banjo in three-quarter time, and then we'll look at the basic melody of this song, and then start to add rolls, and then add licks, and have all kinds of fun. So normally, when we're playing bluegrass with the banjo, we're usually playing in four-four times. Just most of our songs, most of our tunes, most of our fiddle tunes are in four-four time. What does that mean? Well, very basically, it means that there are four beats in each measure. Okay, so once we get used to that and we go to try to start playing some banjo in three-quarter time, it can mess with our brains just a little bit. But actually, I think that three-quarter time is really, really suited for banjo rolls. Uh, think about the classic problem that you have with 4-4 four, four timing, but with three fingers in a roll. You see, if we play a forward roll that's made up of three notes, okay, and if we continue to play that... They happen, of course, in multiples of three. Well, what do you do with that over four beats, which is divided into eighth notes? So there's eight different spots for us to fill in a measure. We're playing notes that are made up of three notes. What's eight divided by three? That's right, it's two and two thirds. So th that's something that trips up new banjo players a lot of times is that you can't quite complete all of those rolls in a measure. You have to carry that over into another measure if you're gonna keep those rolls going. But in a waltz, that problem is solved. We've got rolls that are made up of three beats. And how many, um, how many eighth notes do we fit in a three beat measure? You fit six. So six divided by three is two. Are you still with me? So two complete forward rolls or backward rolls, any of these three note rolls fit inside the measure of three, four time. One and two and three and. Same for backward rolls, of course, too. So when you get used to that, it makes it a little bit easier to play because you start to get into this gallop and this rhythm. And you can maybe even hear it as I performed on top of Old Smokey when I went to... It just felt good to have that forward roll in there here in that backbeat of the three-quarter measures. Uh, a lot of your licks aren't going to quite work in waltz timing because so many of our licks are built to be played in 4-4 four, four time, even our standard old G lick. One and two and three and four and, and then it lands on the next one, uh, more licks like this. One and two and three and four and one. Okay, so if we try to carry those licks over into three quarter timing, one of two things is gonna happen. One is you're gonna crash and burn, or two, you're gonna play something that you didn't mean to play that's gonna be really cool. So maybe you wanna try it. Uh, but there's ways that we can adapt our licks even for three quarter timing. Um, if you think about just our regular G lick, okay, that's made for a four beat measure. Well, we could adapt it for a three beat measure by just taking off the first little half of it and doing something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. You hear that? Okay, the same thing for like our forward reverse slide roll, our lick that we like to play. It's made for 4-4. Four, four. Um, you can just take the fifth string out of that, just go right up to the first string and back down, and it works. So instead of going all the way up to that, just come right back down. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so we could take a lot of the licks that we're comfortable with in 4-4 four, four time, adapt them just a little bit, and they work great in 3-4 time, but it still takes some practice, and that's what this lesson 
is all about. Let's look at the basic melody for On Top of Old Smokey because I want us to always keep that in mind as we go building these breaks. If you've never done a build a break lesson with me before, it's where we take the very basic melody of the song and we learn how to build a solo out of it. Let me just say a little disclaimer here right quick because we talk about this over on the forum. The point of build a break lessons isn't ultimately for you to learn what I've written here in this lesson. Okay, you can, you can take it and use it, you can steal all the licks, all that good stuff, tell people you made it up, whatever. Really the point is for you to ride along with me in the process of taking a basic melody to a more advanced break. And in that process, seeing how I think about it. How do I think about adding rolls to a, to a, a melody? How do I think about working in the licks so that you're learning the actual process so that you can go out, take melodies of your own and do this same thing. That's the whole point. So if you're not coming at it from that perspective, you need to reset your perspective, have a little paradigm shift. All right, so let's look at the basic melody. Uh, again, we're in three, four time. The first note of this one starts on the third beat of the measure. On top of old smoky. We're, of course, doing it in the key of G. Um, so it uses all of the notes in a G major arpeggio. Smoky. Now, when it comes in right there on smoky, and that's a C, okay? So that's kind of interesting. It, it leads in with a C chord. And then I want you to notice that second fret that I play there. It has that big long slur line that stretches into the next measure. You know what that is? Well, it's called a, a tie. It's a tied note. So that's going to last over into the next measure, still ringing out. Um, it's gonna last two beats into the next measure. So one, two, three, one, two. And then on the third beat of that measure six, we come back in with another second fret and then walk it. Okay, so that whole first line. One, two, three, one, two, three. We've got a big long melody note right there on the open first string. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, what this uh, what this tells me, whenever we have these melody notes that are hanging out for long periods of time, it tells me that we're gonna have a lot of opportunity to play some cool licks or to mess with rolls and, and stuff like that. And we're gonna get there uh, because the melody is not that busy, so it leaves a lot of interpretation for us. The last line. Um, and that's it, that's it, right? Now you see at the end of that line, uh, we're gonna come in again. These verses are very short. And then we're going to begin adding rolls. And uh, that's what I want to do next because I wanna look at how this forward roll fits into three quarter time. Um, and then of course, how to add licks on top of that. If you're watching here on the website, don't forget to click on that next video segment to see how to do that. Download the Rhythm Track Jam Track MP3s to practice along with me, as well as the tab. If you're watching somewhere else, why aren't you on the website? Come on over. Have fun with this at banjobenclark.com.